Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank you all for coming out today to view our wonderful presentations. And you know, I hope you had a great time today with seeing all of our student exhibitions. And I'd like to thank our wonderful keynote speakers, as well as Ian and Marcel for organizing this. But without much ado, let us begin. My name is Chin Chi Wang, and I'm here presenting as the representative of my team, including Arturo Selec, Katerina Dermanova, and Thomas Storwick. As you can see, our team is guilt, machines, and confession. Trust in the digital age. Now, what does this necessarily entail? Before we really dive into what we've necessarily done with our project, we need to look at the concept of what confession is. Confession is generally defined as an admission or acknowledgement of wrongdoing, typically coupled with a desire to do better or repent. It is a key component of many religions, Catholicism being the primary one, and is often a, a very deeply personal act. So, how does this tie into our course and what we've done throughout the entirety of Arts 490? We've looked at a lot of the socio-cultural implications of artificial intelligence. We've looked at how bias affects artificial intelligence and those who use it. We've looked at how flawed data sets influences the algorithms that come out of it. We've also looked at the ethics of privacy as well as data collection. All of this comes together, finally, within our project. Our project, put very simply, is a confessional booth with a chatbot instead of a priest serving as the role of a confessor, listening to the sins and confession of a visitor. We worked very hard to try and create the confession atmosphere to really focus on creating something unsettling and something that will cause people to really think. So many of you have seen this through the course of the day. This is the screen that greets you when you enter our room, when you step past the candles, past the ominous red lighting, and through the red curtains into the booth itself. Welcome to the digital age. Confess now. Now, what does this really entail? You've seen it, I imagine, right? You've all seen our project, but it's also worth getting into how this really came about. So we have our lovely Artero here with Kat in the background. This is actually us painting our project from, you know, before. It was a lot of work putting it all together, but it was a lot of fun assembling the actual booth. It took a lot of weeks, a lot of coats of paint to create the actual booth of itself. Here we have Tom painting stuff now. <laughs> and this is the physical part of it, but then there's also the actual digital component. The digital component is a chatbot created uh, using IBM's Watson. IBM's Watson has a free light program that allows anyone to use their vast array of services and their databases to create a variety of tools for whatever the user desires. Now, the main idea behind how we made this chatbot and how this worked fundamentally, I was in charge, in fact, of making the chatbot. The chatbot works on basically three major levels. First of all, you specify a series of intents, which are basically intents of the user. The, the chatbot tries and detects these intents. For example, the user is giving negative feedback or positive feedback or asking for permission for something. You create these intents so that the chatbot is able to determine what they are and then respond accordingly. And then this leads to the next part of it. The next part of it is the actual dialogue. The intents could be considered to be the internals, right? If you were to use a car analogy, this is the internals of actually how it runs. But then now that you have the, the intents, what do you do with them? And then so basically the dialogue is like the steering wheel on the inside of the car where the user interfaces with it, where you can now talk to the robot uh, and the chatbot now has a variety of pre-scripted responses that changes depending on what it detects and intend to be. So this is the fundamentals of our chatbot. But realistically, what were we trying to explore with our project here? We had a series of major themes we wanted to really approach and get people to think about. And one of the key ones we were really looking at is the concept of digital privacy and trust, and really have people consider this. Now, when it comes to algorithms and other things of its like, they're almost ubiquitous in our modern day lives. We have algorithms running many, many things. In fact, it's getting more and more integrated with our daily lives with such key examples being, you know, Amazon Alexa or Google Home. And a lot of it is focused around, we're just, we just kind of trust them in a sense, right? People don't really question it too heavily. We trust all these algorithms to handle our banking, to handle our bookings, to handle all these things. And we really want to dive deeply into that and challenge that assumption. And this is why we chose a confessional. We chose, okay, people interact very personally with chatbots. Let's take this to the extreme. What is the most personal we can make it? And what is more personal than confessing to your, to your priest? So with this, we want people to consider the final destination of data. Is your privacy really assured? And the nature of that 
personal relationship and your anonymity and the footprint that comes out of your digital interactions. Additionally, we also want to look at the idea of modern practices supplanting old traditions and the concept of a digital versus a physical community. As we know, you know, technology is a big part of our lives. And in fact, we also, church was also a very big part of many people's lives throughout all of society for a very long time. The church was not just the church or religion, right? That's probably a better way of explaining it. It was you know, a center of learning. It was the root of the community. It was a root for mental health support. But with the modern age being as it is, there are many other institutions and technologies and whatever that have taken over and supplanted many of these roles. And we want to explore this as well. And we set up our, our, our project in such a way that it's meant to be unsettling. You are meant to be slightly uncomfortable walking in with the aesthetic because we want people to consider these things. And this is what we believed is the fundamental root of an art project, to make people think. If we made people think, then I believe we succeeded in our goal. So then it comes down to our final conclusion, right? And the question that we really want people to take away from today and moving forward into the rest of your lives, how much faith, and I use that word very pointedly, do we put into the hands of algorithms into our daily regular lives? What is the nature of our personal relationships? And some of you probably also noticed the robot itself was kind of janky, right? It might've gone stuck in infinite loops or whatever. That's kind of also part of what we wanted to do. It was to showcase the dichotomy there and the uncanny valley of the digital, you know, human machine interface that comes in of how personal it gets. These things are still algorithms very fundamentally. So realistically, this is our, this is our project. We hope that you guys have had a great time with our project. And we hope it really made you consider a lot of stuff. And again, we're very, very honored. We're very proud to be the first people presenting today. And, you know, please enjoy the rest of your night and Good luck to my fellow presenters.